Okay, look, Charlie had feelings for me, but that doesn't mean that things are going to happen because they won't, and they didn't. We're looking for a two-page letter. It's from Charlie. A letter from Charlie? Hi. Hi! <laughs> That's what you're looking for. Charlie! Hi. Charlie Craig found the letter you sent me. Oh. Thanks, Charlie! Where are you going? I don't know. Not home. Pete, are you sure about this? Because I could get a hotel room. Oh, it's no problem at all. Thanks. I got some stuff to set you up here. A bunch of these little shampoos and soaps. A sewing kit. A little clock radio, huh? Do you like reading the Bible, Greg? Maybe later. If you don't mind, I think I'd just like to turn in. Oh, Pete, I'm totally when they get fun. Uh, Greg, uh, this is Magda. Magda, this is my buddy Greg. How's it going? Yo, I stayed. He's uh, kind of on the outs with his wife. Mm. Da na you don't happen to parley vu any Hungarian, do you? No. How about that? Good for you. You're going out with her and you don't understand a word she says? I don't know if I am going out with her. Here's the deal. I went to that little Hungarian restaurant, right? I'm talking to the owner. I say I live alone. My, my life's a mess. I need to find a woman. Okay. A couple nights later, Magda shows up here. We eat. She cleans up my whole apartment. Next thing you know, we're doing the Budapest Shuffle. Pete, you know, I, I've had a rough day. I, I would really like to turn in. I, I know, I know. I'm sorry. It's just I can't figure out if she's the best girlfriend in the world who also does windows or the best maid in the world who also does me. Pete, I just left my wife standing in the rain. I'm sorry. I know that must be rough. Thanks. I guess I don't really have a problem. Until Friday, and then I gotta figure out if I gotta pay her. I don't know what she has in mind here, but I'm gonna watch either way. You sleep tight. Or something borrowed. It's the necklace I wore in me and Greg's wedding that Kitty threw for us. Wow, it's beautiful. Thank you. You okay? Oh, yeah, fine. Dama, I would understand if you don't want to be in my wedding. Oh, why wouldn't I? Because Russell is Greg's friend and Greg's going to be an usher and your marriage is in the crapper. <laughs> oh, don't be silly. I want to be there for you. Plus, it's good for me to stay busy. It keeps my mind off things. And when I look at this dress, all my other problems seem so small. <laughs> I'm the bride. Everyone looks stupid, so I looks good. Do you think that might be Greg? I don't know. Well, if it is, shouldn't you answer it? I don't know if I'm ready to hear what he has to say yet. I have to a Sun Jinping. Where Dharma did ya? Timbu Jing. Timbu Dong. Hello? Oh, hi, Charlie. Oh, dear. Uh, no, that's just a friend of mine. She, uh, she thinks she's Chinese. <laughs> What's up? Charlie, she said, Dharma the Pang your Charlie, Ran Ta Gen Ta Shen Sen your Ma Fan. Look. He did see us, and he's a little bit upset, but it's not your fault. Um, actually, he's staying with his friend Pete right now. <laughs> of course I told him that. He found the letter, he saw us together. What else is he going to think? <laughs> well, uh, there's nothing really you can do, and I think we probably shouldn't stay in touch. <laughs> I know. I hope so, too, Charlie. I Bye. Bye-bye. What did she say? Oh, I'm not comfortable with that kind of language. 
<laughs> you ready to call it a day? I got a freezer full of goulash. No, I, I got some more work to do. <laughs> so do I. Come on, didn't you hear the little pterodactyl on the pole? Mr. Slate says it's quitting time. I'll see you later. Now listen, I... I know I haven't been much of a help during this whole emotional... It's okay. Okay, great. Well, I'll see you back at the crib. <laughs> Marlene, who is it? It's me. And this will only take a minute. Okay. I, uh, I heard what's going on with you and Dharma. <laughs> Marlene? Is there something that you need? Oh, God, yes. <laughs> you can go home now, Marlene. Okay. I'll go home now. To 802 Van Buren. It's a duplex. You can walk it from here. Thank you, Marlene. Thank you. What do you want? Uh, look, I, I know I'm the last guy you want to talk to about Dharma. But there are some things you need to know. And what would that be? Well, for one thing, I can tell you your wife loves you more than anyone. I don't need you to tell me that. Clearly, you need someone to tell you that. All right, you know what? Get out. Greg, you've got an amazing woman. Yeah, I know. I read your letter. Well, maybe you should go back and read it again. Because the woman I'm talking about in that letter is the woman you are about to lose. Oh, and like you're not happy about that? G Greg, if you break her heart, I promise you I will be the first one in line to put it back together. But that's not why I'm here. Why are you here? Because I want her to be happy. What makes her happy is you. And if you don't realize that, then maybe you don't deserve her. Hi, honey, I'm home. Well, you should have called. I just put away the goulash. Oh, it's okay. I'm supposed to go to uh, Russell and Susan's wedding rehearsal. Well, Dharma's a bridesmaid, right? Yep. Ooh, that should be a good time. How ticked off do you think Russell will be if I skip the rehearsal? I'm just an usher. It's not like I'm going to sing Sunrise Sunset. It's a shame there wouldn't be a dry eye in the house. How come you're doing the dishes? The chef me the idiot. Mark is mad at me. I put some money on the dresser for her. So she's your girlfriend and she thinks you're treating her like a hooker. Or she's my maid and she thinks I'm testing her honesty. Or she is a hooker and you underpaid her. You know, I don't need you adding a third thing here. She's got a heck of a temper. I think it's a Hungarian thing. Maybe she's born with it. Idiota. Go in there and talk to her for me? No. Well, could you at least run in there and grab the cash off a nightstand? You know what? Russell's my friend. If Dharma has a problem with me being there, she can leave. Man, you buck over! Your maid wouldn't break things. Kids have fun. And a hooker wouldn't clean. <laughs> America. <laughs> is this the first time the two families have met? Yeah. It's going great, isn't it? Well, there's got to be something everybody has in common, don't you think? They are all opposed to this marriage. <laughs> That's a start. Oh, my. Greg's here. Are you going to be okay? Yeah, I'll be fine. Thanks. Are you going to do something loud and stupid and screw up my rehearsal? Wow, I hope not. <laughs> hey, sorry I'm late. It's okay, we were just wrapping up the mingling portion of the evening. <laughs> going so well? Thankfully, most of Susan's family doesn't speak English, so my parents were only able to offend a select few. Nice. <laughs> hey, how are you and Dharma doing? Uh, not so good. You sure you want to go through with this? Hey, I'm supposed to ask you that. Explain something to me, Wang. 10,000 Chinese restaurants in San Francisco. And we have to schlep up to Mill Valley? Don't ask. <laughs> Nothing is good enough for you. Okay, okay, the happy chit chat's over. <laughs> Time for rehearsal. Sir, this is Feng the Galip Jiazhu. What did he say? I heard my name. 
He say you a shop dressed man. <laughs> Susan, you're not helping. Your father trying to pick a fight. Come on, it was a big thing for him to agree to have the wedding in a Chinese restaurant. Oh, please, you found it like a Chinese food more than mine does. <laughs> Folks, why don't we uh, put this aside and uh, just do the rehearsal? Hold on a second. If people have issues, they should be able to get them out into the open. Dharma, it's not going to help to have everyone yelling at each other. Sometimes, Greg, that's how problems get solved. Yes, and you're the expert on problem solving. But I do know that you solve problems by talking about them, not by walking off and leaving somebody standing in the rain holding two wet dogs. Yes, well, if Mr. Gottlieb were seeing another grumpy old man behind no Mr. Wong's back, that might be appropriate. No one was seeing anyone! Excuse us. Well, that's all we needed. You usher started it. In our country? Hey, 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 we're not in Thailand now, friend. Taiwan? Oh, what's the difference? <laughs> This is crazy. I know. Listen. No, 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 me first. I, I don't want to live like this. I love you, and I know you love me. It's over, it's done. I forgive you, let's move on. I'm sorry, what? I was hurt, but I'm ready to forgive you and move on. I don't even need to know what happened. I told you nothing happened. Well, it doesn't matter, I forgive you. Well, that's very big of you. What's that supposed to mean? It means I know you were hurt, but where do you get off coming in here and forgiving me and thinking that that is the solution to our problem? What, you don't want me to forgive you? Look, we can make this about who did what to who and what was worse. I'm sorry, what could be worse than running around with another guy? Oh, I don't know, maybe not finding out what really happened, assuming the worst, walking out and not talking to me for three days. I was really angry, I Dharma. know you were. Look, all I'm saying is that we can make this about who did what to who and tally up all the points we've got, but then we just wind up with a giant scorecard instead of a marriage. Hey, I'm the one who's trying to say this is okay, I forgive you, let's move on, and I get a lecture about how I don't know how to be in a marriage? What is that? You just don't get it, do you? Biggest mistake of my life. No, you were taking this way too seriously. The first husband's just practice like the first batch of pancakes. <laughs> Dharma, Susan's getting married tomorrow. She doesn't need to hear about pancakes. Mercy, this is the portion of the evening where we explain to Susan the facts of life. This should be good. No, no, we don't have that. We have the fun limousine ride. We have the bright scavenger hunt. Susan, you still have to find a pair of jockey shorts. <laughs> Here's what you're signing up for. You and me. It's love at first sight. You look into his eyes, he looks into your eyes, and it's all, you are the sunshine of my life. That's why I always be Great. I miss Greg. And she's back. <laughs> you know the really hard part is the family. See, so you don't have this problem with Russell, but me and Greg's families are so different. <laughs> That's it. I'm going to call the wedding off. No, 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 no. You love Russell, and you have a wonderful future together. So maybe one day you make a tiny little mistake, and he finds out you're human, and then it all goes to crap. Oh, look. It's the other lady. You know what? Here's a quarter. Get on the phone. Call it off. Dharma, that's a life You bet it is, sister. <laughs> My God, what was I thinking? You weren't thinking. You were looking into your eyes and he was looking into his eyes. You are the sunshine of my life. That's, that's why I'll always be alive. Okay, one more time, people. Here's your tuck and fold. It's one time lengthwise, one time widthwise, right? Wrap it around a finger, it makes a J. You slip it right in the G string. Any questions? It's okay. They do bachelor parties here? They're familiar with the concept, yeah. Okay, let's move out. Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. Come on, six men are going out, six men are coming back. Nobody gets hurt. Hey, Russell, you coming? Yeah, in a minute. Hey, listen, I know these, uh... These bachelor party strip club things aren't fun for anybody, except Pete. So let's just kind of see if we can do this for him. It's his night. What am I doing, Greg? What do you mean? Susan and I disagree on where we'll live, what we'll drive. And I have huge problems with her family, and her family has huge problems with my family. Am I kidding myself to think it's going to get better? Yes, you are. <laughs> it's not exactly the pep talk I was looking for. 
Look, all that stuff is not going to change. So you just got to decide whether it's worth it or not. How the hell am I supposed to know that? Hey, guys. Uh, give us a minute, Pete. You got to come in there. Magda's in there. You're Magda? Yeah. So she's a stripper? I don't know. She's got a feather duster and a French maid's outfit. It could go either way. Come on. Hi, I work with your daughter down at the co-op, and I just wanted to say that we're so happy we can share this wonderful day with you and your family. Hello, very much. Oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Wong. What cultural hubris to just assume you speak English. I, it's, it's a crime that we self-absorbed Americans commit all over the world, and, and, and we're hated for it. Hello, very much. And hello very much to you. <laughs> Kitty, Ed, what are you guys doing here? The groom's father is my lawyer. Oh, right, I knew that. So much for your ginkgo biloba. <laughs> Kitty, how is Greg doing with the situation? Oh, as well as can be expected. Well, I think it's important for us to let the children know that we love and support them. And if they don't get it right in this lifetime, they have hundreds of others to work it out. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what I told him. Listen, Ed, if, God forbid, the kids don't patch this thing up, I want you to know that I want the four of us to continue to be friends. Well, let's just hope it doesn't come to that. <laughs> I hear you, man. God, this is so bad. Did you do something different to your hair? I think my mistake was that big green drink in the bowl with all the straws. Why did we order that? Uh, we didn't. That was at another table. You drank it while the people were dancing. Really? That's it. I'm grounded. Just home and school. Listen, Susan, I may have said some things last night that might have been a little negative. That's okay. But if you could stay away from me today, it would help. <laughs> I can do that. Susan, I know you're busy. I'm only going to take a minute. Oh, uh, you're not supposed to see the bride. Yeah, six more weeks of winter. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I've been going about this the wrong way. It's not about my way or your way or I'm right or you're right. If we do it that way, we'll just wind up with a big scorecard instead of a marriage. We need to work through these things together. Mm -hmm. I really needed to hear that. Yeah. Welcome, family and friends. We're here tonight to celebrate the coming together of Susan and Russell. They are happy that so many of you who mean so much to them are here to celebrate and share this, their wedding day. I welcome you and bless you with these words. Blessed be you who are here in dedication to all that is loving, good, and sacred. Tonight, we celebrate and bless the wedding of Susan and Russell. He's sorry, he under didn't a chuppah, understand before. The Jewish wedding canopy. This chuppah symbolizes many, many things. It is tradition in the Jewish religion. Mainly, this chuppah symbolizes the home that they will share. symbolizes the home they're going to share together. Go! Um, the chuppah symbolizes the home that they're going to share together. And this chuppah also has special significance. It was a nice wedding. Yeah, Marcy sure made a move for that bouquet. She's yeah. a little tiger. I know. I thought Mrs. Wong did a good job singing Hava Nagila. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess we still have some stuff to work out. But we will. I know. Great! <laughs> Susan. 
Fermat, are you okay? <laughs> 